Hello, welcome to my tech fan. My name is Igor and I'm extremely uh, curious about this video because I have absolutely no experience with CD printed metal. I mean, how strong is it? Do we have that uh, weak layer adhesion problem or something like that? And I will compare it directly with the FDM printed objects from ABS. Uh, now, all these test specimens are printed by GSC PCB and uh, the primary services is manufacturing PCBs, but they also have uh, CD printing services and I also presented their SLA and uh, MJF uh, CD printed uh, objects. Maybe it is important to mention that uh, this is not a sponsored video. I got these test objects for free. Well, actually I had to pay $2 uh, and probably this, the, this is the amount how much I will earn from this video if it will stuck under one or 2,000 views. But never mind, my curiosity is much stronger. And uh, before I start with the uh, unboxing first, uh, let's see if, uh, shortly the ordering process. After logging to JSC PCB website, I'm going to resources, see the printing, get an instant quote. And here I'm uploading all my files. First, I'm uploading files for SLM Metal CD printing. And for each object, I am selecting the printing type, uh, quantity, adding some description. And uh, after this, I'm saving to cart. And then I'm uploading the files for uh, ABS printing. And for each object, again, I am selecting the printing type. Here I can select the color too. Save to cart, and then I can see the summary of my order with estimated values. But I cannot do the payment yet. Every object will be reviewed. For example, here I had some objects with the thin parts, and I have to confirm that I know there is a risk of damage during the printing. And after approximately two weeks, uh, the package arrived. And now let's see what's in the box. This is heavy, so this is from stainless steel. Now first I will open the ABS parts. These are test objects, the test specimens. And I also ordered this. Satsana uh, fan shroud for Industry V2 from ABS. I ordered these two to test their possibilities, because sometimes this is uh, heavy for printing, you cannot print with the uh, supports, because you cannot remove them from inside these channels. And this starts from very small uh, contact surface. And basically the supports you need only at this part here. And this printing looks really great. And uh, the reason I need this from ABS, because I already printed this from PETG, and it melted here, where the hot and don't have the covering from that uh, silicone cover. And now these are those uh, test objects from ABS for the bending and impact test, tensile test, layer adhesion, grip test, and the torque test. Quick check of the dimensional accuracy. 10.3 by 4.25, a little bit bigger. This should be 4 by 4 millimeters. Hmm, a little bit bigger in cross section, the diameter. This should be 6 millimeters in diameter, and this is also a little bit bigger. So approximately uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter uh, bigger dimensions. So properly they use a little bit bigger flow rate. I hope uh, this will result a better layer adhesion, but we will see that in a few seconds on the testing. Now let's see the metal parts. For the filling definitely real metal and it's heavy. Yes, no coin. Well, this is mostly for aesthetic look, but uh, this coin looks great. And I have two of them. <laughs> A twist drill, diameter 13 millimeters, and we will see if it can be used as a real drill. I know, to drill at least some wood. These are test objects, oh boy, this is really strong. For the grip test, 
and uh, something I predicted that uh, if this is strong like a real stainless steel then I will have problems uh, with uh, bending or breaking them and definitely for the filling this is very very strong <laughs> probably this will not bend at all I'm not sure if I can bend it in my experiments but yeah, this is comparison video and uh, whew, I'm sure that this will not break under my half kilogram hammer Maybe I will start immediately with the 1 kilogram hammer. <laughs> uh, let's check the dimensional accuracy. This is diameter of 6 mm and this is 6.06, .06, so very accurate. This should be 10 by 10 mm, 10.1, 10.1. Hmm, 10.09, 4.12. So it looks like the accuracy is better actually than with the ABS parts and uh, just in case uh, this is printed in vertical position for to see if we have some kind of layer adhesion but I think they didn't print this in vertical position uh, 2 by 2 millimeters in the middle and uh, this should be printed in vertical position but I can see from this uh, texture that this is printed in horizontal position so actually I cannot test here the real layer adhesion but now at least I will have uh, 4 test specimens for 10 size strength and in all 4 cases uh, the smallest cross section area is uh, 2 by 2 millimeters of course this is my problem because I ordered this object, uh, theoretically it should be printed in vertical position but they oriented it in the most uh, comfortable position for printing and that's the horizontal one. Now of course these two cross section areas are not equal but to make it comparable I will calculate the stress in megapascals or newton per square millimeters this means the force I will divide with the cross section area and in that case the two values will be comparable with each other. And the reason for this is that uh, I have no idea how strong is the printed metal and I want to be able to break it with my equipment. Now one thing I noticed that this object for the torque test is usually printed in uh, horizontal position with FDM printing. This is printed with the bridging. And I noticed that this metal part is printed in vertical position. I can see that from this surface here. This means I will have at least one object where can I test the layer adhesion because uh, if it is printed vertically and if it has some weaker layer adhesion or something like that uh, it will break here much easier. So this will be very important not only for the torque test but for the layer adhesion too. So this is not a regular board, it has two threads on it, one right and one left sided. I print it for the joke because uh, I want these uh, nuts left and right sided to use on one board. But unfortunately uh, it doesn't work. But now I know because uh, the size is a little bit bigger on all test objects by approximately 0.1 millimeter. So this means uh, that I should reduce the size in X and Y direction by maybe one or, or one and a half percent. In that case it will be functional. But of course uh, I will use it but uh, not with this regular uh, nuts, but I will uh, 3D print one uh, which I will extend the size in XY direction by 1.5% and in the meantime I printed these uh, nuts I raised the size by 3% as you can see it works perfectly with this metallic board it's a pity that uh, it doesn't work with this metallic nuts, it would be more uh, elegant solution. Just for comparison, I'm curious about the density of this object. Uh, for the bending test, uh, it is a box, I can uh, measure the dimensions and the weight is 26 grams. Just for comparison, the ABS is 3 grams approximately. And I measured the exact dimensions of this test object, uh, this is in cubic uh, millimeters, but if I divide 26 grams with 3.32 cubic centimeters, I will get 7.83 kilograms per liter or grams per cubic centimeters, and this is very close to official uh, 7.85 uh, kilograms per liter density of the stainless steel. This means that this is really solid objects, there are no bubbles or gaps or something like that inside. 
and I'm starting with ABS transite test. This test object is printed in horizontal position, and the smallest cross section area is theoretically 4 by 4 millimeters, but it's a little bit bigger. But I will calculate it uh, in that uh, stress equation. Now for the filling this was uh, weaker than uh, usually the tensile strength of the ABS but now I noticed that they didn't use the maximum number of the perimeters but 100% infill and only two perimeters. Uh, properly this made these test objects a little bit weaker than my usually uh, test objects uh, when I testing ABS or any other material. And now the layer adhesion test, this set object is printed in uh, vertical position and again the smallest cross section area theoretically is 4 by 4 millimeters. And again I can see maybe uh, three perimeters and the rest is properly 100% infill. And now the metallic test objects, don't forget uh, the small cross section area here is uh, 2 by 2 millimeters. Uh, theoretically uh, this and this one in the middle uh, should be for testing the layer adhesion, but as I mentioned earlier they are all printed in horizontal position. First objects are those which have to be printed in vertical position. Smallest cross section area is the same, only it is wider on the holding parts. And these are originally designed to be printed in horizontal position, but in the middle size is the same, uh, so I should get the similar values here. And they all broke properly on the smallest cross section area. It was so hard to break it that I didn't watch the scale, so I don't know the numbers yet, but he already saw a few seconds ago. And now the eyes of impact test. I will start with the ABS and here I have this half kilogram hammer which will swing to the other side and from the difference in potential and energy I can calculate the energy used for breaking the test object. Now in this equation we have a uh, mass which will be half kilogram in this case. We have G the gravitational acceleration and we have the difference in height which has to be in meters. And I will divide this with the cross section of these test objects and uh, I can get, I don't know, in kilojoules per square meters, the uh, energy. Now with this metallic, uh, probably it will not break under this half kilogram hammer, so I will replace it with this one kilogram hammer. But I have the feeling maybe this one too will not break this test object, but uh, this is maximum what I can produce with this equipment. Okay, let's start with the ABS part. ABS. the zero position. Even the ABS was very tough material. And now this is one kilogram hammer. Stainless steel. I cannot see not even smallest bending on it. I want to try to uh, mill down this cross section area. The thickness is 4 mm, but I will try to make it approximately 1 mm, and I hope in that case I have a chance to break it with my equipment. <laughs> Definitely for the feeling like uh, real steel. And the new thickness is exactly one millimeter now. Hmm, what do you think? Will it break under one kilogram hammer now? Let's find out. Second attempt with the 3D printed metal, but now the cross section error reduced from four to one millimeter. 3D printed metal with reduced thickness. And the zero position. <laughs> it didn't broke. I uh, hope you can see it didn't even deform. So even with this reduced thickness uh, I cannot measure the real impact strength of this material with my equipment but at least I know what is the minimum but the real impact strength is of course much higher. But at least uh, I know one more thing and that's that it is very easy for machining. I can see absolutely no gaps or bubbles or something like that on this uh, cotton surface. Uh, and uh, for the feeling, that's why I like these manual milling machines. It was like a regular steel. At least I can see that it started with bending, but it was very far from the breaking. Here you can see the position of half kilogram hammer after breaking the ABS part. This value is good for filament and average for ABS material. 
And here you can see the equation with one kilogram hammer and we reduced A by one millimeter thickness. But since it didn't broke, this value only shows the possible minimum breaking energy. One more thing I want to try, but probably it will not be a problem. I want to see how easy it is to drill and tap a hole. Uh, it will be M6. This means I have to drill five millimeter hole. For the feeling, it was very strong, stronger than the carbon steel. So definitely, really uh, great material. The hole is perfect, and now let's uh, create a thread inside. So the cutting was uh, really hard, so definitely uh, harder than the regular carbon steel. Again, I can confirm that. And this is M6 bolt, and it works. And now three point bending test, but I know I will have a problem now again with this metal part. Uh, but I hope I will have some uh, measurable deformation. And since this is comparison video, I want to see how much load I need to have the same deformation with the ABS part. Uh, now I notice that this is not 100% uh, uh, perimeters, but they use some uh, three perimeters and 100% infill. So this deformation is not 100% comparable with my test where I use the maximum number of the walls of the perimeters. Well, it is better if you don't see it, but here I use all my gravitational force and uh, I could bend it only 0.8 millimeters. And it looks like I have some permanent deformation. And now ABS. And here for 0.8 mm deformation I needed only 2.6 kilograms. And usually I record the load for 2 mm deformation. Very so the ABS part started with the bending and then it broke completely. And on the metallic part I can see very minimal permanent deformation. And now one regular torque or twist test. The diameter of the cylindrical part is 6 mm, but actually this is designed for the plastic, uh, because I'm sure I cannot twist this 6 mm uh, steel. I imagine, can you twist, I know, M6 bolt, which is actually weaker than this uh, solid 6 mm. I'm not sure, I will do the test with the ABS and then I will think something uh, with the steel. So this side goes into the vise. And the other side goes into this uh, digital torque meter. It can record the peak of our movement. 1.5. Oops. And 1.6 was the peak. Uh, let's give it a try, but uh, I don't think I can uh, deform this. Especially with this small arm. It was overloaded. I will try to reduce the diameter on a lathe machine and I will try to calculate the stress with the new cross section area. And now the diameter is reduced to 3.05 millimeters. I hope I can have some deformation now. And now we reduce diameter. Three point two, four point one, four point one was the peak. and I could break it. And it broke properly along the layers, so it has some weaker theoretically layer adhesion, but anyway, this was very strong. 
and now my regular creep test uh, the creeping is the deformation of the material during the constant load these are my uh, standard uh, test objects uh, from ABS and from metal and I will place on them this 1.25 kilogram load and I will uh, follow the deformation in next five days I will measure the distance between these two reference surfaces it should be 12 millimeters exactly now I measure on metal it is 12.1 and on the stainless steel it is 12.2 but it doesn't matter because with the creeping I need the def deformation the difference between two days <laughs> almost visual no deformations here for ABS I'm locking the position with this uh, part here so it can be more accurate measuring sixteen point zero seven now unfortunately the metal didn't deform enough so it cannot uh, fit inside this M3 uh, bolt but it is strong enough so I can measure it without uh, deformation 12.25 and I will repeat this measuring uh, once a day next five days and on the last day I will place it inside the oven on 50 degrees Celsius and measure that additional deformation but the measuring will be off camera only I will create a picture once a day so this is day zero this is day one after 24 hours day two day three day four and now one hour on 50 degrees celsius inside the oven one hour passed and actually the temperature inside was 53 degrees celsius and now let's measure them and our last measuring after this heating hmm. 16.24 almost no deformation no creeping and the stainless steel <laughs> 12.24 no deformation at all and now removing of the load after only approximately five minutes uh, almost no permanent deformations on these two objects just a little bit on the ABS and now let's see the possibility of this twist drill a few months ago I created a shorty with a plastic 3D printed uh, twist drill and uh, I got so many evil comments there because uh, people don't understand really the point of that video because they don't read the text. The, the point was that basically uh, that can also be used as a twist drill until the drilled object is softer than the material used for the tool. In that video I drilled the apple and it was drilled uh, without any problems. Later but not in that video I tried to drill this wood even with this pilot or exactly this one here and basically it uh, melted. And now I will try to drill the same wood uh, with this uh, 3D printed metal twist drill. Now let's see if I can drill uh, aluminum, this is 5mm thickness, but I will create a pilot hole with a 5mm uh, twist drill. And I will use some uh, cooling lubricant here. <laughs> uh, this is crazy, I didn't expect this. I wanted to try the wood, but I didn't expect that it will cut aluminum. And let's check the edge of the twist drill. And I'm not sure if it's visible on camera too, but this edge is in perfect shape and it's still very sharp, both edges. And basically this is another proof of the great layer attention with metal CD printing, because this is printed in this position, and if, if it would have any weakness in the layer attention, this could easily break in along the cross section. 
And now let's analyze the results in this Excel table. I'm starting with the creep test, and these are the distances between two reference surfaces, but I actually need the changes between two days. And that's why I prepared this table. Zero means no creeping. Uh, there are some negative values, but properly that's the result of inaccuracy in measuring. And these are all very small values, even this. The tensile test. For ABS I have two, but for metal I have four, because unfortunately all four test objects are printed in horizontal position. And that's why I don't have here uh, any. And it is very important to mention uh, that uh, this is the uh, breaking load in kilograms, but I calculate the stress because the cross-section is not equal in two cases. And basically this is what I need for the comparison. Uh, in a graph you will not see good uh, this, uh, this difference, that's why I add here the multiplier, so this is how many times is metal stronger than ABS. Uh, for bending, I don't have to change, so this is the uh, load in kilograms, and it was very big difference here. For the impact test, uh, well, the, this is the value for the ABS. This is a average value for the ABS, but of course very good for compared to the other filament types. Uh, but metal, don't forget that here I calculated with one kilogram hammer and we reduce uh, cross-section uh, area. But even then, this is only the minimum size the test object didn't broke. And the torque twist test, uh, I calculated comp using these uh, values. This is in Newton meters. And I calculate the stress, uh, but we reduce diameter. And don't forget here, basically the diameter is, has the factor here in the power of 3. And this is also a very big difference. Here you can see the multiplier. Basically, I can show you here in the graph. Uh, but don't forget, this is very small value. I checked earlier results. And uh, here you cannot see uh, good uh, difference, but you can only see that uh, the metal is much stronger compared to the ABS. Interesting that here the layer adhesion is not much weaker compared to the tensile strength. And here you can see the uh, bending load for the 0.8 millimeter deformation the breaking uh, impact strength, uh, kilojoule per square meters, and this is the torsion or twist stress in megapascals. Another conclusion, first about the ABS. Uh, interesting, very good quality ABS, and this is the first time that on the script test I don't have the effort deformation, almost uh, not even uh, on the first day, and especially you saw after 53 degrees Celsius, one hour, uh, I don't have any additional creeping on this uh, ABS. Unfortunately, they don't, didn't mention me what uh, brand they use here. That's their secret. Only weakness I could see on the tensile test, uh, but uh, when I analyze the cross section, I can see they use 100% infill, and there I can see a little bit more gaps than usually, which I print uh, using the maximum number of the perimeters. Now about this uh, CD printed stainless steel. The SLM CD printers are very expensive and that's why it is good to know uh, where can you use CD printing services and now I know that this is really great quality because uh, it, this is like a CNC machine stainless steel. I cannot see any kind of the weakness of these uh, objects. And this was most impressive basically to use this uh, CD printed twist drill like a tool to drill aluminum. Of course, don't uh, use this uh, to create this kind of tools. Uh, regular twist drill is much better, of course, and probably cheaper. Uh, by the way, uh, approximately price of this twist drill would be $18, but when you upload the STL files, before you do the purchase, you can see the estimated price of the objects. I'm not sure is it according to volume or maybe the Z hike or something like that, but uh, you can see the summary before you uh, do the ordering. Well, this was my first experience with this CD printed metals, uh, but uh, definitely if I want to do more testing like this in the future, I should redesign these uh, test objects because uh, my test specimens and testing are designed for uh, CD printed plastic and not for this very strong stainless steel. If you have any other experience with SLM CD printing, please leave me a few lines in the comments. Thank you for watching and happy designing and ordering. Bye.